sitting together and making a determination of the list uh, and yet probably uh, the, 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 the Minister of State for Land uh, had the understanding that that w was a sole responsibility. Uh, so, but when the matter went to the Prime Minister, the Prime Minister uh, guided and, and uh, I think from that time, uh, if, if she's still dissatisfied, I've, I, do, I have not known. But at least the guidance from cabinet in, and from the prime minister in respect to what is the role of the senior minister and what is the role of a state minister was well articulated and, and, and I had hoped that she had uh, picked, uh, if, if the matter is still maybe uh, the old letters, I can maybe say that the old letter has been overtaken by mm. those interventions. Mm. Yes. Okay. Uh, my Lord, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. My Lord, I think at this moment I'll invite the Commission to interact with the witness. Thank you very much. The Commission will now interact with the witness. Uh, we'll do so for the next probably 10 minutes, take a break, and then return. I'll start the deliberations with Commissioner Frederick Ruhindi. Um. Thank you so much, my lord. I don't think I have much, but uh, I think uh, having been a cabinet minister, the challenge from the institutional point of view, I think uh, my view would not be issues of Honorable Namganza Honorable Betty Amongi, but uh, I thought you could have sought for clear guidelines on the functioning of uh, um, cabinet ministers because the substantive cabinet ministers are ministers, the other ministers, ministers of state, are also ministers. Attorney General and his deputy are ministers. Now, when you look at um, Article 114 of the Constitution, Clause 4, it says that is among the other ministers says a minister referred to in this article shall have responsibility for such functions of the ministry to which he or she is appointed as the president may from time to time assign to him or her and in the absence of the cabinet minister in his or her ministry shall perform the functions of the cabinet minister as the president directs. So you see the challenge. Sometimes there is this view by the ministers of state that me, the one who should assign me my functions and duties is the president. Uh, do, do, do you, have you ever s seen that complication? So, I, and I think really that um, uh, you, 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 you went about it well, you sought guidance, but I think the guidance should have been a bit broader, a bit broader um, than your own particular peculiar aspect. But of course that's the one we are investigating. Um, that's one. Number two, The Commission, the Uganda Land Commission, is about the corporate. Now, when I see these other structures coming in, both the corporates, of course, they say they have, they are supposed to 
perform their functions without interference, without undue, undue interference, without this, and we all know that bo corporate bodies. So here you have got uh, an interministerial committee from the sector, which is not simply overseeing or supervising, not carrying out a supervisory role, but um, undertaking the actual functions of, of the commission itself. Uh, that becomes a, a real challenge, in my opinion. At the end of the day, the Commission has to take a back seat and then they leave it to you. Then when asked, they say, well, we, we, we have been we have been taken over <laughs> by the ministers. I think there is a very big challenge. Uh, apparently, there was being developed a law to operationalize the Uganda Land Commission. And um, I hope that is still going on. As we speak, what is being proposed to be the status of the Ugandan Commission? Or has the exercise stalled so that uh, we wait for the conclusion of this exercise of uh, this Commission of Inquiry? I don't know. Maybe you can give us where you are with it and what status is being proposed uh, the Grand Commission should take. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, my lord. Thank you, my lord. Um, clear guidelines on the function of uh, other ministers? Yes, it is, um, in this particular one there was uh, that guide, guidance, but let me also really indicate that in the case of our ministry, a, a lot of, a lot of in, um, independent performance of the function of each of the state ministers is carried out directly but we only get um, uh, i would get um, reports from them in form of either a brief during uh, top management uh, because for example um, the minister of state for urban development you find he is doing so many things on which comes directly to him minister of state for housing so many things that comes directly to him, letters that come directly to them, including Minister of State for Lands. So they, they are doing their normal function of Article 114 on a normal basis. However, this particular issue of, of the Uganda Land Commission or the Land Fund arose out of when uh, I... I invoked the power given to me as a minister under section 55 and said we must have a policy guideline because we are having so many complaints in relation to this so it was at that point that she felt that um, uh, that that section 55 uh, actually uh, uh, meant the minister in of state for lands but when we, we, we got uh, clearance uh, from Attorney General, from Cabinet, uh, everywhere, uh, she was clarified that uh, in the context of all laws, uh, uh, when you find the interpretation of the minister, it is always the Cabinet Minister. Uh, and, and, and so I want to leave it at that context that uh, 
it was it was resolved explained to her but also she does a uh, normal work including work that i delegate to her because uh, in in communication most of government communication or communication from everywhere comes directly to the cabinet minister complaints and so on but usually i do a lot of delegation to the extent that sometimes it might even be difficult to solve all those issues and uh, uh, because of the magnitude of of land related issues in respect to ulc being a, a body corporate corporate because of the law which we have not yet established currently ULC is not operating as a body corporate however uh, the ULC bill which which we have uh, already passed at top management uh, has been uh, sent to cabinet secretariat and also we have written to finance asking for uh, certificate of financial implications. So when did the ULC stop acting as a body corporate? Um, that that is new to me. Because even in law school, even in the old ULC before 1995, we knew ULC to be body corporate. More so after 1995. When did it stop being a body corporate? Sorry, I, it's new to me. I want to understand. Maybe the, the former attorney general can also okay. advise. Did you ever hear that U.S. stopped being a body corporate? I'm hearing it for the first time. My Lord, when I came to the ministry, I was n notified that it is this particular law that would make it uh, uh, the status and visage under the constitution. But I take your, your guidance that uh, uh, the former attorney general can... can uh, we throw it back to the Apuma Attorney General. Can you advise us when you last made the ULC non-body corporate? Well, I think uh, the Land Act is very clear. Drawing from the Constitution, I think the Land Act in Section 46, Section 46, Subsection 2, says the commission shall be a body corporate with perpetual succession and a common seal and may sue or be sued in its corporate name. I'm talking about the Uganda Land Commission. My, my, what I'm, I'm requesting to understand is why is it that uh, Every time people talk about the, the particular law you also referred to, that it is only the law that can make it independent. Because that has been my no, major issue. The, <laughs> mm. the other law being envisaged, which you are, you are, you are, you are in the process of making, yes. is to operationalize these provisions of to give them more legal effect and to, to, to make them detailed in application. I, I'll give you an example. There has been a misunderstanding, and I should actually call it a misunderstanding, in understanding Article 239 of the Constitution, which talks about functions of the Uganda Land Commission. The, which says the Uganda Land Commission shall hold and manage hold and manage any land in Uganda vested in or acquired by the government of Uganda in accordance with the provisions of this constitution and shall have such other functions as may be prescribed by parliament now you go to section 59 Is it? No, I don't think that's the yeah. one. Powers. No, it's 53. Powers of the Commission. It says, for the purpose of performing its functions under the Constitution and this Act, the Commission may A. Acquire by purchase or exchange or otherwise hold land rights. 
easements or interests in land. B, direct and so on and so forth. C, which is the most important, sell, lease, or otherwise deal with the land held by it. You see? Now, this is a power. Mm. Power to sell, power to lease. Uganda Land Commission doesn't own that land. The land is owned by government. Uganda Land Commission as a corporate body can, can also hold its own land. No doubt about it. But government land is known. Government land belongs to government and the people of Uganda. So certainly, without even actually applying the law, but applying common sense, <laughs> Uganda Land Commission will not have the power to sell government land without getting the consent of government. Of course, what uh, normally the Uganda Land Commission has been hiding, it, behind, it, it, it hides behind the idea of getting consent from the, the, the department concerned or the institution which is actually using that land. But we try to clarify that even when we are enacting the, uh, making the national land policy, mm -hmm that that consent should be obtained from cabinet because that's where actually government resides as you know that's where cabinet that's where cabinet sits uh, cabinet sits uh, ministers sit in cabinet they, they they perform the work of government that's the representative body of the government and that's where the consent should be obtained from not even from these uh, user institutions because they they even collude those user institutions, they collude with these officials of the Uganda Land Commission and they do what they want to do. But cabinet is more protective, it is more legitimate, and it's better placed to give the consent. Uh, that's my advice. And I, I used to give that advice even when I was the attorney general, and in writing, by the way. So, you see, when you are operationalizing now this law of the Uganda Land Commission, in that law operationalizing this, this, this constitution and these provisions of the Land Act, such, such issues should be clearly put in place. That, for instance, this is a power. When you talk of a power, you have a power to sell. In other words, if government says, you're going to land commission, we have land some place, want you to give it to investors, say to investors, then you would not say, but I don't have the power in law to sell. This is a power to enable you to, to sell. It's not a function. Because you're going to commission, its function is not there to save government land. <laughs> no, it sells government land, it leases government land when government wants it to be leased or sold. But am I clear, Honorable? Yes, you are. Very good. Thank you so much. Thank you. So bas basically, and uh, I think normally I'm, I'm much more plain speaking, I think that the land, Uganda Land Commission has always been a body corporate, is a body corporate under the law, is a creature of the law. That is what lawyers say. It was created by the law as a body corporate. So when you say that the Uganda Land Commission will become a body corporate. And so, so now, right now, it's not. That is problematic. And probably that explains why there is a confusion between the roles of the minister and the roles of the commission. But I think you are still saying something. So I don't know whether you had finished. No, I you. had concluded on, you had concluded. on, on the yes, But I hope you've understood that the Uganda Land Commission is a body corporate. It can sue and be sued. Yes, I have. Thank you. Commissioner Rose Nakai, would you like to go on? Thank you. Uh, maybe I can start from there, Honorable Minister. 
when you were answering his questions, you referred to um, policy directions or policy directives that the Ministry of Lands or the Minister has been making to guide the Uganda Land Commission. My simple understanding of a policy direction would be that it must have a backing in a policy and it must be intended to supplement existing policy in terms of processes, procedures, and basically the set imperatives under a given policy. So I'm wondering which policy you base on or which policy you are supplementing in issuing or by issuing the policy directives. Uh, my second question relates to your statement. If you can look at your statement. Bottom line to page two of the statement contains um, something that looks like an extract from policy guidelines. And I would like to know, is this all that is in the policy or there is a detailed policy guideline that was made in addition or that contains more than the A to D that has been stipulated here as um, priority groups in receiving payments? If I may guide more, the last paragraph reads, due to low allocation of the funds under this output, we issued a guideline to prioritize payments to claimants based on the following parameters. A, categories where there are presidential directives to pay. B, the sick who have provided proof of emergency medical treatment, referrals by hospital. C, those who have court orders or arrest warrants. And D, the rest of the claimants. And my question is, is this a part of a bigger document that contains policy guidelines, or this is all? What date was this policy guideline? I wonder whether you can provide me an answer to that one, the date, because it forms the basis of my next question. I provided, the, this is not a policy, the policy I, I provided to the commission. What date was the policy? I cannot, it's, it's, it's with the commission. Maybe. You didn't keep a copy? No, I have not carried it today. Well, all the same, I, I can proceed and ask my next question. I've been looking at um, a letter dated 15th November 2016, signed by you and addressed to the Chairman, Uganda Land Commission, to the Accounting Officer, Mr. Mogumia, to the principal and officer, Paul Idude, and its subject is Directive on Government Policy in Relation to Land Fund. Do you have the document? No. Maybe I, I can pass it. it. When I read that document, I find a lot of I, I, I. And when I listened to you yesterday, you talked about the fact that top management makes management decisions that are followed. This morning, you've mentioned about the committees that have been set up to guide processes of the Uganda Land Commission. And I'm wondering whether that letter was written before these initiatives were established or after because it looks like it is the minister directing and when you read the language in that letter you really wonder what is the nature of the relationship between the minister the chairman uganda land commission or the staff of the uganda land commission 
maybe you could read um, uh, paragraph D, um, paragraph one, where it starts with Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, I must state that I'm finding difficulties implementing government policies and presidential directives related to Uganda Land Commission in as far as your pace of work is concerned. I've written several letters seeking clarifications on certain land issues or decisions you have taken and I have not been honored with any reply. Then three, paragraph three. Uh, can you give it back and direct more? She can give it, it back. Because uh, the next are uh, not paragraph, they are, they are into ABC. The first star on on plot from yes. on plot. Mm -hmm. I'm reiterating the following directives. One on plot twenty six to twenty eight land for Aga Khan. Proceed to cancel the illegal title that was issued with a no objection from Ministry of Gender. That title was issued in error. I'm giving you the mandatory twenty one days under RTA to take action effective sixteenth November twenty sixteen. Then turn the page and read the second paragraph to start to. I'm directing you to proceed to cancel all the lease titles on on that land to pave way for immediate negotiation and titling of the land in the name of ULCM LDU for construction of our headquarters and facilitate parcel of it for other investments as directed by H. the President in our meeting of 13th November 2016. Could you read what property that is, that second directive? Miss Nantale, land yes. in Zambia, plot 16A to 28A. So who has the mandate to cancel titles in your ministry? Is it the chairman, Uganda Land Commission? Because uh, he's you receiving these directives to proceed and cancel titles. He would have understood because we have procedure you, uh, for, for commissioner land registration who is mandated to cancel, cannot wake up in the morning and cancel a title. It is the, you, for example, if ULC finds a problem, mm -hmm. it is the chairman ULC that should give a right to the commissioner and give rationale why that title should be cancelled. So that's why if I write as a minister, I have to indicate to him to be the one to proceed with initiating the process. So are these resolutions of a committee or this was under Article 55? Section. The, sec, was it Section 55? 55 of the, the Land Act and my function under Article 117 of the Constitution. Because if you realize most of these things, they are issues related to either what cabinet has, has tasked me to do or what the president has tasked me to do. Okay, then the next one, the next star. The next bullet. On government land. Mm -hmm. On government land, effective today, all new applications for government land must be accompanied by letter of clearance from the minister. This means that after obtaining an application before it's presented to ULC board for approval, the technical officer will forward this a memo letter, the, the land for clearance, attaching clearance from the MDA. This will also include all applications for extension. This is a stopgap measure to ensure implementation of presidential directive to recover all government land that has been 
fraudulent were located, struck and crushed on the measure. With that, that's good. Uh, okay. that, that's good enough. Okay. And, you know, we, we are going back to the minister creating another center of authority in the Uganda Land Commission to be the one to pass almost all the lists. And yet you've just informed us that this is not an activity for an individual minister. That top management makes decisions. Today you've talked about the committees. And I just want to know whether you find this new procedure uh, a procedure that is going to promote accountability, especially if it is done by an individual minister in the context where there is no legal framework, detailed legal framework, you know, allowing for this sort of working relationship between the minister and the Uganda Land Commission. Like this letter re reads, it was a stopgap measure. And I think when I sat here, I indicated at the beginning that when I came, we sat in top management and found a lot of complaints on Uganda Land Commission. Mm -hmm. I also talked, uh, told this commission that I, I as a stopgap measure, I suspended the uh, land allocation as we designed the policy in top management. So this was during the six months where we agreed it will only be a location for government, what government has, has requested, either through the president or through cabinet, but not application from the public. So for that three months, this was a stopgap measure that it is brought, and of course when it is brought, then we all sit based on what cabinet has requested or what the president has directed, then within we could not stop issues of allocation for investors and so on in the three months that we were reorganizing. Okay, but, but the rest of what I talked about on the management of the ministry is actually a cabinet directive. So no minister can, can go to start uh, managing a ministry without top management. It is a cabinet directive that all ministries must have top management as a decision-making point and all minutes of top management are deposited with the office of the prime minister but i must say that um, most of the witnesses we received here did not take that lightly because it looked like maybe the minister had an ulterior motive in taking the responsibility of verifying some of these things in fact, you know. if I may add that the view right now in the commission, right now, not yesterday, not six months after you took office, is that the minister has too much power, is doing the micromanaging. You have to contact her even to have an agenda. She has to approve the agenda for the commission. Even right now. So as you answer those questions, just bear that in mind. It's a current feeling. Even the sweeper in the other commission will tell you, if it doesn't go through the minister, it won't happen. My Lord, those are issues that was agreed. Uh, it is in the policy guidelines. I told you that policy guidelines was determined by the top management of the ministry what and commissioners. Say? We've just been talking about the law. Who is the Uganda Land Commission? Who is the Uganda Land Commission? And, uh, you see, my Lord. Is, Minister, you are very powerful. You, if you don't like the commission, you can change the commissioners. This is it. This, this is how it works. That if the commissioners are not doing like you say they should do, you as a, a political person can talk to the appointing authority and you can have that changed. There's a difference between I don't agree with what the commission is doing and then I will interfere with what they do. You don't agree with them, yet they can be changed. And then maybe you can have a new system of, and a new way of doing things. But I think, Commissioner, you are still asking. Yes, I was, my lord. Thank you. Uh, my lord, on that particular one, I submitted here uh, guidelines which were approved under the chair of Honorable Musumba 
the meetings, unfortunately, during that period I was abroad, the outcome of that document, all the commissioners of Uganda Land Commission participated. The former secretary, Mr. Buoji, participated in coming up with that document. In that document, it stated that agenda of the commission will come to the ministerial committee. And I think that was in the spirit of, for example, what uh, my Lord, the Honorable Ruindia, talked about that it would be important that even cabinet, cabinet member, when we just came, had actually made a proposal that we should take the agenda of, of the Uganda Land Commission to cabinet for approval. Why? Because all the ministries were up in arms that Uganda Land Commission is lo allocating their land unilaterally without telling them and therefore they want all the agenda to be approved by cabinet. But that particular one has not yet been anchored in this current, in the current law, but it's in the proposed law where actually cabinet are saying it should be cabinet to approve because of the nature that the land, Uganda Land Commission is supposed to manage and superintend is government land. And each of the government entity wants to be there to say, I agree that this be allocated. So in that context, really, if the commission have an issue uh, at the time when this document was being endorsed by them, made by them, they would have come out clearly to, to this association. And, and, and you know, that goes back to what Honorable Hindi was saying about what do you think the ULC is under the constitution? Is the ULC a body just meant to sell land? Or is it, what does management of the land mean? And I think there, there can be, there can be a, a, an, an understanding of the ULC that actually makes it a custodian. First of all, a custodian. Why is government buying new land all the time, billions of shillings, when ULC could be a good custodian of government land? The statement, the criteria is not very straightforward. That's why my presentation to cabinet was, please, first help me, I clear the current debt. And we even agreed to first suspend with the Minister of Finance, to first suspend the uh, application, new application from, from last year. So now new application, unless it is again uh, a directive from the President for new application. So f now we have first halted new application until we have finalized these other ones. So it is really majorly about the funds that are re required to conclude the matter not being released. That's why such a problem would, would emanate from. Mr. Minister, according to what we have discovered, I don't think it's an issue of the urgent clearances which you have to make. Mm. Because, for example, Mr. Buzivira, since 2013 to date, he has been paid 13 billion. Whereas those who offered their land, and actually the land has already been transferred, and in some cases subdivided already. They are not considered, but somebody applies in 2013, you clear him. The one who applied in 20, 2001, you've not paid. It's not that you're considering only urgent issues. With the there is a criteria which you're not telling us. There must be. And, uh, and uh, knowing, I mean, if you have uh, uh, an inventory of payments, mm. that so and so, we paid him or her so much money in 2011 or 2010. And then the money comes in. Why don't you, does your committee sit down and say, oh, we paid this man so much, we still always 970 or 90 million shillings. Why don't you pay him something or her something to keep them going and giving them hope that actually the government is not taking, they have taken their land, but they are, they are willing to pay. Rather than, you know, using your argument, 
that there is an agent, something urgent comes in. We've seen the letters mm. written by big people that, and you pay. If you pay, you should also consider the other people. And you should, you should also consider the time, the period taken, you know, without these people getting their money. Why don't you segment the payment so that you make everybody happy rather than pleasing one person or a family, as I told you, they came in without a penny. They went back home with 3.5 billion shillings while this man seeking only 975 million is not paid. I would like you, uh, Madam Minister, to take interest as the head of the ministry do some public relations, please, <laughs> to, to make the people whom you serve friendly and let them be also happy. Madam Minister, just um, we asked whether there's another criteria that you hadn't told us, but there's a criteria that was actually mentioned by one of the people who are involved himself. And it involves your staff in the in Uganda Lands Commission and within the ministry itself. Anybody who comes and is willing to part of 60% of what is to be paid will have their money paid immediately. He even gave us evidence of the amount of money that went onto his, his account, the amount of money he had to withdraw from his account, the people to whom he paid that money, 60% of what is paid to the so-called beneficiary comes back to your staff. My Lord, these are now uh, new rev revelations or information that uh, I have got, especially on 60% demand from somebody's uh, payment. Because it goes up to 70 because every time I've been uh, asking, what uh, they tell me is that money goes direct through EFT to somebody's account, and there is no way you can uh, you can uh, get somebody's money. But anyway, you have indicated that money went to his account, then he withdrew, and and we, we have the accounts. Mm. We have the people who negotiated these payments, we have their names, who was, who negotiated, how much must be paid. And then the accounts show the day the money is paid, there are days when 90% went immediately. The person paid morning, in the afternoon he took out 90% of what was paid by ULC. The next time he gets paid, 80% is taken out. The accounts are there. Lord, maybe for the minister, you might wonder why, but uh, it comes to the sort of people who are not really owners of the land, who are just used as uh, mm. as names. The same people who get uh, those uh, letters of administration from magistrates' courts. So the owner really, even even that ten or twenty percent is getting his profit because of that. Um, and then it also goes to overvaluation. The land is overvalued so much, so as to create that room for that 60%. Yeah. Uh, my Lord, I would uh, first uh, appreciate the proposal of segmenting the payment starting with the year as a criteria, the year that people have surrendered their title, because if this uh, criteria is used, it is blind, it is blanket. Now, on this other aspect of uh, uh, the 60%, uh, the context of, of uh, probably these people not having, not uh, being the original owners of the land might be actually true because it would be very disturbing to, to find somebody who as his land genuinely seceding 60% to 
maybe that's why general if if that would be if that theory would be true maybe these other people who have not been paid for long could be genuine landowners who are waiting innocently for their pay because i would really strongly believe that a person who has given their land genuinely would not part with 60 percent it would be such category uh, of would people who go and pick pub title from public land and and such category of of uh, power of attorney who look for dead people and get that but uh, really let let me also again present this matter to top management and probably we can think through it properly and uh, also give you proposals from top management on on how this matter can be handled uh, of course taking cognizant of the proposal of segmenting and also looking at emergency not only uh, emergency forming uh, the, the 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 priority but emergency taking some part of it while the rest also take portion of it so that uh, and it's very unfortunate because some of these people come and they're old uh, with with the life expectancy in Uganda you really feel that somebody can can easily uh, pass on without getting their money so we will we'll try to work together to see what, what, how it can be handled thank you my lord no more questions Thank you very much. And as we conclude, I just wanted to reiterate on the issue of um, money being paid to the wrong persons. And actually, I'll use your own letter, Mr. Minister, of uh, 11th of October 2016. That letter in which you, you mentioned to the chair, chairperson, Uganda Land Commission, follow up on the implementation of decisions of our meeting, uh, Minister, Chairman, UN Land Commission, Permanent Secretary, Housing, Urban Development, Secretary, Land Commission, in my office and other related issues to the Land Fund. Now, on page four of that letter, there is a subtitle regarding the list of beneficiaries of the Land Fund and the Land Fund release for this quarter. And uh, Honorable Minister, you say, I would like to forward to I would like you to forward to me the total amount of money released to this quarter under the land fund and the list of beneficiaries you have prepared for the payment. This is important because I have already received a petition in respect to the payment to Pastor Daniel Walugembe of Prayer Center Church Wandegea from the American Procurement Company Inc. regarding the debt the pastor owes totaling to Uganda shillings 3.7 billion 764 million 575,000 as per petition from JL Olanya and company advocates. This should be factored in the balance accruing to the pastor and needs to be expeditiously handled. Now, we have looked critically and have examined the documents of Pastor Daniel Walugembe in actually in that particular payment, and most likely, I think, in which Nancy Kombi, I think, is involved. And there are letters, obviously, from Olanya and company advocates, uh, this, this person keeps changing lawyers here and there. But the thing is, if there is a trade in documents, so Pastor Walugembe becomes the payee, and the family is shocked to read about billions being paid to Enansi Kombi when they know she died long ago. And when the, the, there is a way in which it was done that was so fictitious and embarrassing that the family actually approached Uganda Land Commission and found that actually letters meant for Nancy Kombi had been 
have somehow taken through Uganda Land Commission to Pastor Walugembe. Now, when this letter comes from a minister, and when we know that the account of Pastor Walugembe is just like the account of uh, the, the other lawyer, Buzibira, and it's just like the account of Odokel, and it's just like the account of all the other lawyers involved, unfortunately. I, I think it, it, it even becomes more suspicious. And then uh, it raises issues uh, as to whether, Honorable Minister, the doctrine that if you can't beat them, you join them is actually true. There is a doctrine that if you can't beat them, you join them. And that, and that everybody on the land commission was involved. Would you like to have a, a look at this letter? I mean, you will just be able to see the date and to remind yourself. But um, issues of Walugembe is the next pink after the page I give you. So that, that is a letter, and it talks about so many other things. And uh, the letter is uh, Office of the Minister, mm -hmm. Ministry of Lands, Housing, and Urban Development, uh, dated 1st October 2016. And uh, the one which is, it is the next pink the next little pink stick on yes. and it's highlighted mm. i would like to forward i would like you to fa forward to me the total amount of money released for this quarter under the land fund and the list of beneficiaries you have prepared for payment to pastor daniel walogembe of prayer church one day from the american procurement inch Regarding the debts, the pastor owes them totaling 3.76575 billion as per petition from J.L. Olanya and company advocates. This should be factored in the balance accruing to the pastor and needs to be expeditiously handled and is signed by myself. I do recognize the letter copied to ministers of states of the ministry the PS, the Secretary of Uganda Land Commission, Commissioner Land Registration, Ms. Nanta Lefarida. Yes, so I was just trying to bring out the, the context that um, when people say that this uh, land fund is used for unscrupulous individuals to take advantage of public funds and that actually land is overvalued, this is such one of those cases. Uh, my lord, at the time, at that time when I got, I got that, uh, I got a letter from Pastor when I just came. He came with a letter from His Excellency the President, and I started examining his matter. And I found so many lists of different people that he had power of attorney, and uh, also an agreement with this Amprok. And this Amprok came to me. And uh, I called both of them, and he accepted that he had borrowed money from this particular person. However, uh, th as that letter is October 2016, uh, by when that I wrote that letter, again, uh, about one month later, in uh, 21st November 2016, I received uh, a, a, a letter from... Director Criminal Investigation uh, of uh, Uganda Police, which was addressed to the Secretary of Uganda Land Commission, invitation for statement recording via CID headquarters GF 1067 stroke 2016. And in that, they, they talked about uh, investigation of a case of obtaining money by false pretense and land fraud via the above quoted case reference where the name of Mr. Jethro Albert Mugumi has been mentioned 
This is to request you to inform Mr. Mugumye, the Under Secretary of Uganda Land Commission, to appear at CID headquarters Kibule on Wednesday, 23rd November 2016, at 10 a.m., for interview and statement recording as regards the allegation against him. And uh, it says that CID headquarters mm -hmm. should contact Deputy ASP Mutabazi Bosco or Deputy AIP Kawesa Moses who will guide him on what is required. So when I got this, I, I, I again did a second um, due diligence on, on, on this pastor, and uh, I talked to the chairman, and we agreed with the chairman to hold payment for Pastor Walogembe until all the investigation related to how he acquired this various uh, plots of land uh, were uh, concluded and I was made to believe that uh, his payments were altered because of this uh, issue. Yeah, so you realize you, later yes. that and, and actually when you look into the, we, because we've had the look, uh, a critical look even at the criminal proceedings, some which were instituted on his complaint and others which were instituted against him and and find that it's it's actually just a club of unscrupulous persons downtown who are trading in the land fund. It's embarrassing and it's huge. Lots of money involved, and 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 that's why we actually look with um, astonishment as to what is going on with the land fund. But that I think that has been. Um, handled. Let me ask you also about this issue of presidential orders. And in so doing, I would like to again to this time refer you to a letter that has a summary of some of the urgent payments. In, and I think you can um, read it out yourself. Uh, the letter is Office of the Minister, Minister of Lands, Housing and Urban Development, the Chairperson, Uganda Land Commission, the Accounting Officer, Uganda Land Commission, urgent payments for land compensation. I refer to my letter of even reference, dated 15th November 2016. I have taken into account the need for urgent compensation payments on the following beneficiaries of the fund, of the land fund, and reviewed my earlier position and allowed the accounting officer, Uganda Land Commission, to pay the underlisted people from available land funds resources for this quarter. Number one, Agnes Bagaya hmm. Bur Buraya, plot 12, block 56, 129.386 hectares of land, amount to be paid 100 million, authority to pay, Ministry of Land, Housing and Urban Development. Number two, Pius Bijirimana, Plot 5, Block 103, 50.5 50 hectares, amount to be paid, 50 million, special request. Nansubaga, Nansu Teddy, Buyaga, Plot 1, Block 224, 255.6 hectares, amount to be paid, 121,67,000. 000. Authority to pay letter by PPS to His Excellency the President. Seguya Sam Buyaga, Plot 3, Block 59, 259 hectares, amount to be paid 100. Authority letter by PPS to His Excellency the President. Number 5, Katushabe Dimitilia Buyaga, Plot 1. Block 10, 259 hectares, amount to be paid 100 million, authority to pay, letter by PPS to His Excellency the President. 6, Muse Kurai Barinda Isingiro, Plot 1, 
block 42, 261.42 hectares, amount 50 million, Ministry of Land, Housing and Urban Development. Number seven, Jemba Nicholas Buruli. Plot nine, block 176, 518 hectares, amount to be paid, 50 million, special request. Patrick Zikansazia <coughs> Buyaga, plot 30, block 96, uh, 21.9 hectares, uh, amount 50 million, uh, directed by Honorable Minister of Finance of finance to chairperson ULC. Total amount 621,067,000. The purpose of this communication is therefore to authorize the payment of the above beneficiaries. However, I still expect reports on the issues raised in my earlier communication referred to above. It's signed by myself and copied to the PS Ministry of Lands. And to whom was it written once again? It's written to the chairperson, Uganda Land Commission, dated. Right. So the, the question is Madam Minister, all those are directives. Um, <coughs> is it possible for us to be satisfied that these people you've mentioned could be summoned to come and appear before us yes. so that we can ascertain that actually uh, what is in that letter is real and that they were probably paid or not paid. Is it possible? Can you yes. get a pass? I can get them for you uh, right. if you give me the date that you would want them. Well. Well, it's, my, it's a suggestion, maybe the chairperson will, will deal with that mm -hmm. to give uh, them a day, if it is And, and I okay think what would them. be useful would be the, like you brought the other documents, Yes. you also to bring the ones that concern these ones, the attachments, and, and that should be useful, because yes, I, I mean, we need to to know what exactly happened behind a payment, and, and I think it's only fair that um, the person named explains really but do, are you satisfied with that way that about the, just the the volume of directives and requests and in terms of handling of this land fund is, is there, is there a, a more a more rationalized and and um, a more open and transparent way this could be done than depending on all this and my lord, mm. uh, three of these names, Nasuga Teddy, Seguya Sam, Katsabe Dimitria, those three names are also Buzibira. Yes, they are Buzibira payments. Payments. And uh, Buzibira is the one who has all these powers of attorney, where the matters start with the Chief Magistrate Scott's awarding uh, powers over estates that have been dormant for a long time. But then ironically, though it says directive, all the letters simply say letter by PPS to HEC, not the president, <laughs> but letter by PPS to HE the president. Not the president. So what really is a directive and what is not? And, and what is the system for verifying that this is really a presidential directive? Uh, my Lord, let me start with the issue you raised that are you satisfied with the ad hoc way in which directives after directives? Uh, personally, I, it gives me headache and pressure because most of these directives will come on my table and uh, I think Chairman became too tired of them when they go to him, 
he will say, oh, maybe you go and talk to the minister, maybe you write to the minister as, as a mechanism of maybe making them, uh, but the, the directives are many. Uh, and like you said, I have already sought guidance on directives from PPS, and uh, I've already been given that guidance uh, in respect to, because usually what guides me, I o always get specific directives from the president. That one is clear. But uh, you get, for example, a directive which quotes the president. Uh, that is where uh, it becomes a little bit difficult. Um, for example, if, if you get a letter reading like this, this letter is from State House, uh, P.O. Box 25497, is 16th April 2018, and the Chairman Uganda Land Commission Kampala request for compensation for land situated in Buyaga, Oima, measuring 6, 761 hectares. The above matters refers. Mr. Ruka Atwoki ABK wrote to His Excellency the President about his land in Buyaga Oima Block 22 LRV 955 Folio 13 Plot 3 Kisara Iguramo measuring 761 hectares which he acquired in 1976. But it is currently occupied by squatters who have made it difficult for him to engage in commercial farming. He claims that he approached the land fund to take over the land but was disappointed when the land was undervalued and even so, the payment for the land has not come through. He is therefore requesting His Excellency the President to intervene and have his land revalued and a benefiting compensation paid out to him. The purpose of this letter is to request you that Mr. Ruka Atwoki ABK is handled expeditiously and a feedback given. So you, uh, this is from the P PPS to His Excellency the President, and there are quite a number of uh, such directive which quotes either someone who petitioned the President or who met the President and the President uh, directed that uh, you handle this matter expeditiously and when such issue comes up and it quotes the, the, the president met the person that one because in our uh, training when we just uh, became ministers we were notified that when um, a presidential directive can be directly or through the PPS so we had been taking this in that context. However, like I stated, uh, I have sought guidance from His Excellency, the President, in the context of these letters, and he has now guided that uh, uh, it should be only directive signed by him that we should uh, honor in respect to, to this matter uh, of the land fund. So that has now this that that now becomes very clear, and uh, of course, again, my lord, the the aspect of uh, being uh, rationalizing, like uh, he is saying, really, the best option would have been if we were able to get money and first clear, maybe the first two three years of of the initial people and then we start phasing the remaining one. And that is what I am trying to push in cabinet. But as that is being pushed, I think I, I am a little bit convinced and persuaded by segmenting based on the, the, the year that somebody, uh, somebody's land was surrendered to government, starting from the, 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 the earliest years coming towards uh, the, the, the nearest years that, that one has persuaded me as a, a parameter and now with, with the directive of the president that we should only consider his directives the directives of the president directly are not many and in many circumstances directives from the president 
uh, if if it is much money is factored under a uh, fund that is worked out with Ministry of Finance. So it would also not uh, uh, sometimes overwhelmingly affect the financial allocation of the land fund. So uh, what I take from here is really the issue of segmenting beginning from these people who have stayed for over 15 years without their money being paid. Okay, and finally, finally, um, we won't be able to exhaust this one, but we can make a start. There is a matter in which a one Soedi Lubega, I think, mm. complains about the manner in which ULC handled his request for allocation. He says he was allocated 50 acres of land by the ULC that was chopped to 40 acres, but eventually he actually lost the allocation. He accuses very specific officers. The, he mentions three, um, three companies that were involved. And that he says the company that eventually got the land was called Gary Smith. His own company, which had investors and for which he's being um, sought after on a warrant of arrest in the United Arab Emirates, the nation, nation oil, lost. There is also another investor called, um, is it Credo? Something called Credo. Credo Business Met International Limited. And in, 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 this, in that case, you see, you, you hear and see cabinet ministers, you hear and see ULC officials, ULC officials at all levels, all levels. But I think the, the reason I'm saying we shall not probably discuss it fully is because they say, they say, the, the, because we tried to find this file as a commission, and they said, no, the file is with the minister. So my first request is, if you have the file, Lord Minister, can we have a look at it so that we are able to investigate it fully? Uh, yes, my Lord, uh, I have the file, and uh, I think I alluded to it yesterday that his complaint came to me through PPS, uh, one of the private secretaries uh, to His Excellency Abo who is in charge of, I think, investors. So when I tried to help me him at that time, uh, I, I got a very long story about that land because they told me Gary Smith uh, applied for the land, 100 acres, he was given, and uh, uh, although he was given, he did not pay premium and, and process the title immediately. Then, and some new commissioners came and they said, no, since Gary Smith has not utilized the 100 acres, let's divide the 100 acres into three. We give 50 to, to National Oil, uh, 10 to, I think, one of that company, Crado, and, and uh, 40 to another company. So the one, 100 was split into three people. No, 40 to Gary Smith. No, either 50 to Gary Smith, 40 to National Oil, National Oil, and then 10 to the other company. Now, when Gary Smith heard that they had split the 100, he went very quickly with the, the help of some officials in ULC. Went, they facilitated him because you cannot pay to government coffers without being given bank mm -hmm. accounts mm -hmm. and all that. So they gave him a uh, cooperation and he immediately paid. When he paid, he went to court and, and sued ULC, got a court injunction for his 100 acres not to be transferred to anybody. So uh, National Oil went to State House, they sent him to me, and I started investigating the matter. Then I found a third interest claim from the family of Dawoodi Chua. So I explained to him the difficulties we are having with Gary Smith and court and all that with this third party interest. 
Then he reached out to the president. Uh, the president called me, uh, requested me to make a report. I got the file in my office. Uh, I made the report, which, which of course indicated the people who are involved, uh, people who are involved in Gary Smith, people who are involved in the other company, the third in party interest, and all the other intricacies in, in that in that land. Uh, as that report went, Gary Smith went a little bit further, and uh, at one point I, I only then was notified that there was a consent judgment that was signed between Gary Smith and, and, and Uganda Land Commission, giving Gary Smith now to, to transfer the land. However, when they went to survey and mapping, again, they hit a dead, a dead end because of this other additional third party interest. So even Gary Smith, as of now, has not got a title on that land. So that is the confusion but uh, if you if 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 uh, you need the file for that purpose it it, it, yes. it will be available to to the secretary yes yes honorable minister we need that file mm -hmm. like that's and actually would like to know how soon you can um, um, avail it to the commission because you've even brought more interesting uh, issues about uh, consent judgments something very strange with consent judgments it, it, it sometimes people, sometimes parties consent to defraud government, but that is an issue we need to look at before we actually make any comments about. But also, we asked you for some other things. Uh, my officers said and uh, that she, that they did not receive any documents. I don't know whether that's true or maybe you gave a, an officer who is absent. We had asked for you for some documents yesterday. You yes, said you'd provide a list of a list of documents, your properties, your yes. No, the properties I didn't because yes. I left here a little bit late. I did not. Of course. Okay. Then we and then also we wonder when you can all present to us on uh, the issue of Henry Mubiru when we can see Henry Mubiru. Because we want, we as a commission, we we have this need to actually complete. We don't like to mention people's names and then just leave it. So if we say we've mentioned Henry Mbiru and there is a contention about even his physical appearance, then we need to actually see the Henry Mbiru. So we wonder how soon we can be availed with a person of Henry Mbiru. And I, I don't know what the other things were. If I don't know the members. The receipt. Proof of payment to DAPCB. Yes, mm. that one I have in my notes. The uh, uh, national oil file can be availed tomorrow. Okay. Uh, in the morning, uh, I would request to be uh, given maybe tomorrow to organize the rest and then I communicate officially. Okay. Yes. And then also we will be able then to communicate when we can see you in camera. Okay. Because you said there are some things you'd rather mention in camera. Okay. Yes. Thank you again once again.